Hey, how's everybody doing today? All right, I'm back. We're getting this done today. No more BS, okay? So I went ahead and did a little something off camera. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm in the process of changing out my U joints and wheel bearings. Um, already changed out one axle uh, U joint. Now I got to do the. I did the driver side. Now I'm gonna do the passenger side. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like, uh, how I did it, and go from there, okay? Uh, yeah, that's that's it for the intro. Honestly, like. If you guys watched the previous video, then you guys know what's up. Uh, if you didn't watch the first video, you'll know what's up. And then uh, when you watch this one, it'll make more sense, okay? Uh, but oh, also, like always, thank you for watching, uh, checking out this video. If you enjoyed this video and any of my other videos, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. That really helps out the channel a ton. Also, if you really like the channel, like the content I put out there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because that way you will always get notifications whenever I post something. And if you hit the bell, the bell will notify you every time I put out a video, okay? So nonetheless, thank you for watching. Enjoy the film, content, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to show you guys what progress I made, okay? All right, excuse my ghetto, my out the trunk workshop. Uh, this isn't even even our car. This is a rental car, but I don't. That's more reason not to care. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm serious though. All right, so driver's side is done. All I gotta do is put the Zerk fitting on right there. Put that bad boy on, and I mean that's really it. Uh, this is the driver's side one. The driver's side, if you guys didn't know, if you have a I can't speak for all of them, but I'm pretty sure a Dana 60 in the front uh, is going to be like this most likely. You're going to your passenger, your driver side axle is going to be shorter than your passenger side one. Okay, so don't freak out and think you got to mark them or you know mix them up. Uh, no, when you pull out the passenger one, you'll know because it's like twice the length of the driver side one. All right, so this one already has the new U joint in it. Um, snap rings are in. If you look in there, see if I can zoom in real quick. If you look, uh, my focus kind of sucks sometimes. Focus, whatever. So if you look in there, there's a snap ring. Let me see if I can move it. Yep, there's a snap ring right there. I put the snap ring in. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it on this one, but I'm just going to run through all, all that happens, all right? So in order to get the old ones out, all I, I didn't even use a press. All I ended up using, my dead blow mallet. Uh, nope, no rubber, no plastic, like a no shit. Metal steel whatever this is made out of mallet uh, this is a two pound works good for me and what you do is you want to whack it to get the old one out so I'm gonna show you guys on this one I've already actually started here what you want to do is you want to whack it okay right here because you can see where I've been hitting it you want to whack it and it's gonna start lifting up to get your caps out because you gotta get your caps out but before you take the caps out you gotta make sure you take all there's a little C type show you guys these little clamp, these little C-clip uh, looking snap rings, you want to take all four of them out, okay? Because if you don't, you're going to waste your time beating it because it ain't going to move. All right, they're usually going to sit in there like this, down in the groove. Uh, make sure you pop those out, and you should be fine. Another thing, best friend, okay? Liquid wrench, PB Blaster, WD-40, whatever you like to use, you ha have a, at least half a can dedicated just to these, okay? Because yesterday what I did was I ended up soaking the crap out of them. I marinated them in liquid penetrant, and today I'm I'm beating on the stuff, and it's actually coming out pretty easy. Um, I've whacked this like five times, and it's moved that much. You know, granted I was hitting it hard, but still, you know, um, a lot of this stuff is, is seized up in there. Uh, same thing with the C clamps, the C clip. Sorry, these C clips they are a pain in the ass to take out, so I highly recommend soaking them. Uh, the only true way to get them out is with a flathead or a pick. So if you do either or, you should be fine. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys how this goes. Uh, uninstalling this, I already took the C clamps out. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. And I'm gonna show you guys how I take this one apart. This one is done, like I said. Um, and we're gonna make weight because once these are built up, we can throw back my front end suspension. So, all right, I'm gonna get you guys set up on the camera and go from there. All right, so get the camera right. All right, there we go. All right, so this is disassembling it. Um, I'll show you guys how to knock this one out. Remember, your clamps, your clip, uh, clips, I keep saying clamps. Your clips are already out. That way you're able to do this, okay? And all you want to do is whack it. She's coming. All right, 
that was off camera. My bad. Uh, I had to. I pulled it back a little bit. One second. All right, that's better. Okay, so this is it. Now, when you pull it out, there's gonna be a bunch of needle bearings on the inside. Uh, all needle bearings are. It looks like that. There's a bunch of bearings in there. All right. So you want to make sure you pull it out. Uh, the way you make a mess. Uh, if you intend on using the caps, reusing the cap. Uh, you know that's on on the person, the user. So, all right. One cap is out. This is what it looks like. Okay. So now you would just repeat for all of them. So to save time, I'm gonna go ahead and get that done, and then show you get back with you guys once the rest of them are already out like this. Okay. Okay, YouTube status update. So I know I showed you guys how to knock out the first one. Um, I got to all of them knocked out, but. Something happened basically where I wasn't able to knock out the last two because they weren't coming out because I already took out the other side. Therefore, it didn't have a sturdy place to go. So I got them knocked out. And this one looked like this here. I, it's just, I, it was physically impossible to get it out because it, I pushed it in instead of out. But I couldn't really push it out because I was hitting on it and it wasn't doing nothing. So I went the opposite way. Well, long story short, I had to cut it. So, <laughs> yeah, I got the grinding wheel. And went to town on that bad boy but she's off now and best of all I didn't damage the yoke so I just wanted to show y'all that I thought that was pretty cool uh, it's actually warm still that's crazy it, it, oh my god but yeah all right so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then I'll get back with y'all all right so what you want to do is you want to go ahead I got the old stuff I got the old the yoke apart and the drive shaft apart I went ahead and cleaned it up just get some sandpaper or something and just clean up inside of here get all that that gunk and stuff out it's gonna make it uh it's gonna make it better for when you put the new one in make it nice and smooth and it's gonna help next time when it's time to but if you really want to you can even go as extreme as putting anti seize on you can put anti seize on on these on the caps if you want to i have some but i can't find it so i'm not putting any on uh, plus i don't plan on changing these out anytime soon so so uh, yeah, I'm just I already cleaned these up. They're nice and clean, ready for install. Uh, I made sure, you know, I made sure there wasn't anything. Check your lips, check your uh, bu your bushings or your inside diameter of it to make sure your yokes and stuff are good. All right. And what I do is you do the front, so you do the, the drive shaft side first. All right. So you can do it two ways, or you can do it this way. So what I like to do is I'll take off two caps. And when you take off the caps, make sure you take them off in a way so that the needles don't fall out. They shouldn't because there's grease in there, but they might still fall out. So I always take mine off from bottom side down. Take it off. All right. And then what you do is put this up like that so the grease, the blue grease doesn't get messed up. And then what I'll do is I'll come, I'll get some of my old, my own grease. Sorry, it's cold and windy out here. I'll get some of my own grease and I'll just grease it. Dang, Shane. I thought you could hold on to the ball. Sorry, man. So then you just put grease on it like this. Make sure it's nice and lubed up. That's going to help for when it's time for it to go in. Right? Uh, if you really want to, you can do two at a time. So like this. Take that out. Grease, repeat like that. All right, let's go around it. All right, like that up. All right, one thing I forgot to mention put the Zerk fitting on now. Um, you definitely want to have it on right now when you do this because it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard trying to uh, put it on once it's installed. It took me like five minutes just to tighten it down all the way because I had to do like baby turns and stuff. Let's go ahead and get this. This is an eight millimeter wrench if anybody's curious. All 
right? What you do is go ahead and put this in like this. Flip it over and then grab your fingers and support support it down here. Alright? You want to support it down here? Grab one of your caps. Alright? Like such. Get it, push up on push up on the U-joint while at the same time pushing down on the cap. So you can hear and feel it going in. Alright. Now all you gotta do is real simple. Come with the mallet. Now you're gonna have to press up on against press up put have like force against the U joint, but it, but not enough to where you're pushing it out, okay? Because you gotta resist it when you start beating it. So there we go. So it's, it started now. So now all you do is just make sure make sure your your, your what you call it just goes down, all right? So it's like this. You guys still see? All right. Alright, and then what you do is, you, now you gotta keep, make sure this can still come out, your U-joint can still slide out that way. So you wanna make sure it's, it's pushed up against it, check your snap ring uh, clearance. So we got enough room for snap ring going, so now when you put the snap ring in, just put it in, just like such. I'm trying to get you guys a good view, you might have to, all you gotta do is push it in. There we go. And then I just get a little flat head or something. Make sure it's uh, seated all the way. This one is. I actually went a little too far when I tapped it, but it's okay because it's going to fix itself once uh, I put this side, uh, what you call it, on. This side cap on. Same process. It's just a little easier now because you don't have to support the bottom side because it's in and the snap rings in, so it's, you don't have to worry about the bottom side falling out. Push down. Get it nice, get it nice and seated. Make sure it's capped the seated evenly, not crooked. Give it a couple wax. Oh. Alright. Check and see if your snap ring, if you have enough room for your snap ring, uh, real quick. If you a way a good way to check to see if your snap ring can fit, just grab the tip, the corner of the snap ring, and place it in there. If it sits in there, that lets you know that you'll be able to clear it. Uh, It'll be able to sit in there all the way. Always make sure your snap ring is seated all the way. This is very important because if not, your ball, your U joint is going to just come out. So make sure you uh, always check it. You know, I like to push down on it, like I said, with this to make sure it's seated all the way. Uh, I'm a stickler when it comes to this stuff, man, because I tell you, I don't, the last thing I want is a uh, is a these bad boys coming off. And if you want, just give it a tap. That's kind of just setting it in place. It's going to set in place once you start driving the vehicle, but, you know, it's something nice to do. All right. Now, uh, where are... Oh, yeah. I'm looking for the other caps in there right here this whole time. So, one second. Let me make sure I'm not losing you guys. All right. So, same process for this side, okay? Same exact process. So, once again, you're going to take the caps out. All right. Like such. Always make sure you're bearings do not fall out okay if they do no biggie just put them in make sure it's clean and no dirt in there because you don't want these bearings to get you know, gritted up with stuff you know what I'm saying get a little grease do the same thing apply grease and this is just going to ensure it goes in nice and even plus it it might help it out in terms of not seizing up in there. Uh, I don't think they're designed to seize up because if they were, they, they would tell you somewhere about that. Right. I, one thing I wanted to do was make sure that this video was better than yesterday's video because I feel like in yesterday's video I didn't do a lot of explaining, there was a lot of time lapsing. Granted, there are a lot of videos out there showing how to do these on uh, 
pretty much Dana 60 or Dana 80 front end. This is either 60 or 80, I don't remember. Uh, pretty much doing it on our front ends, but you know, maybe maybe this video might be that one video that helps somebody figure that out, you know, or understand it better. Wow, that's tight. Okay, all right. So, same thing. This one is a little bit different. So I'm gonna come out here. What I do is I come out here on the edge. All right. Now, if you notice, the thing, the whole idea behind this is that I am not using. I'm not using a vice, okay? A lot of times people say you need a vice, but if you don't have a vice, then, you know, what are you going to do, buy one? No, so I'm just, you know, innovating. I'm doing, this is the way I'm doing it. It worked for me. It should work for you guys, too, providing you, uh, you know, just do what I did on here, too, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, push that down. You want to push that. Now, what you want to do is you want to push the cap down. You, you you want all the force down okay but you don't you got to support the yoke because if not the yoke's just gonna fall out of the cap so support the yoke from the bottom can y'all see yeah support the yoke from the bottom push down right and then what you want to do is not push up don't counteract it but just just hold it in place and just give it some wax like such okay almost in snap rings now if you go a little too far or you notice you went a little too deep don't worry about it because you can uh it's gonna fix itself once you put the other side in cool all right snap rings on i'm gonna do the same thing to this side grab that bad boy all right now this side is gonna be even easier hold on a second Now you still got to support it though because the cap can still come out because there's nothing counteracting it. So you support the bottom of the yoke just like you did the first time and then tap her in. Take her home. Okay. Now I might have been a little excessive with the grease because uh, it's all splooging out and stuff, but that's just me. Uh, you don't have to put the grease around it before hitting it in. I just believe one, you're coating the inside with some type of some type of lubricant, which is always good when it comes with these suspension components. And two, even though these are greasable, and two, uh, that's just how I operate. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to do it. That's how I do it. It works for me, and I'm, I'm fine with it. So it looks like I got to go in a little bit more. Actually, I might be able to get it in. Let's see. people is how you put a U the U joint back together on a uh, on your axle sweet now uh, this little flange right here this is just a dust shield these are removable so if you ever had to buy a new yoke it's not gonna come with this guy uh, you have to take this off and put it on now with this one it kind of got bent when I was taking off the one so what I'm gonna do is this right here I'm just tap that back and I'm just gonna rotate it and make sure make sure it's seated all the way because there's a little gap so now so put back on the wheel bearings and we're gonna take this job to the house because this is the one we're doing right it feels good right now but it's like I almost forgot grease it see the seals swell up when you grease it so oh there it is all right that's enough i should have done that last one I'm gonna go ahead and put this stuff back in. Um, I'm actually gonna remove this cable. Can I, should I? Yes. I don't need this old cable because I got a new one. All right, so 
rip drop shaft in. Uh, if you want, clean this up. Um, actually, let me grab some sandpaper real quick. I want to clean that up so that way it's nice and clean. Okay, so we got that in. And then I'm going to come here. This is uh, the anti seize I was telling you all about. If that can focus, whatever. Uh, pretty much, you just want to coat it. It comes with its own little, its own little wand. And then I like to put this in here. And this is how you make sure your hub doesn't seize up into your spindle when you go to remove it next. And go ahead and clean off this. Since I don't have any more grease, I'm just going to use motor oil. Uh, to keep it lubricated. I'm not, I'm, when it comes to putting stuff hardware together, like, I am, I'm all about keeping stuff lubricated, man. So, some type of lubrication is better than nothing, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so I forgot to put the heat shield on. Uh, I have to take off the hub, and please don't do this if you're doing this. Uh, make sure you put the heat shield on before putting the hub on, all right? So I fixed it, I caught myself before I torqued everything down, uh, but it's all good. So real quick, I'm just gonna run the new cable. I'm gonna run it through the heat shield. All right, y'all, I got all the, I got all the, what you call it stuff. Oh, that was my eBay. All right, I got all of the what you call it. Uh, can't even think right now. I got all the four bolts for the god dang for the wheel hub. They're in. I'm gonna run them down now. feels freaking amazing okay so now we'll go ahead we will get the nut on all right guys so I was gonna try to torque this but I wasn't thinking and it's pretty much it's pretty much pointless to torque that because I can't because the wheel is gonna spin so once I get the wheel on um, or get the caliper on I can have someone hold the brake I'll be able to torque these down. The torque for it is 260. Um, I'm probably not gonna be able to torque that all at once. Um, if any, double check stuff just because, like, I don't know. I guess that's just the way I, I do maintenance and stuff. All right. Let's go ahead. All right. So that's on. So now, one thing I'm gonna do later, I won't do it right now, but one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just probably like a little PV blaster to these threads. That way it keeps them from cross threading or anything like that. Uh, it, I know it probably wouldn't even if I didn't do that, but you know, just to be safe, uh, I'm gonna put some anti seize on my caliper bolts here. Wow, what is that? Looks like uh, whatever. Put some anti seize on these. That was not that bad. Ryan Little. That's it. <laughs> Uh, well, minus the nut, I got to torque that down, but I'm going to have to put the wheel on and go from there first, so. Alright, everybody, so uh, I'm going to do the, the outro here. It's done. Uh, it went good. It was a good install. Um, everything was perfect. I took it for a test drive. Um, I got a... Uh, 
I gotta bleed my brakes because I had to disconnect the driver's side caliper because I couldn't get the caliper back on. Uh, so I had to compress the pistons, but I had to crack the line. So I gotta bleed the brakes, which is really simple and quick. Um, it drives, it drives so much better. Um, and I, I specifically pulled speed, pulled up, you know, got up to like 60, 70 miles an hour because that was when the vibration and the shaking was like the worst. It was horrible. Uh, and I used to hear the grinding the most at that speed from the wheel bearings. Now, none of that. Uh, it's all good. Uh, it, it rides really. It rides pretty good considering the type of tires that are, that are on it. You know, the shocks need to get replaced still. Uh, bad steering box. Uh, I'll, also, I also forgot to mention to you guys, I found the right side tie rod that I just replaced last summer. Uh, it's bad. The, the bearing is all wall, wallowed out and just it's crap. So I'm either going to contact that company because it has a warranty on it or I'm just going to... Uh, I've had two options. Either do the fourth gen. Apparently, if you get the fourth gen steering, uh, it fixes all that slot plane uh, and it stabilizes better. That or I'm probably going to have to just fork out the money uh, bite the bullet and go with some high quality uh, parts, you know, like car, what is it, Carly's, Carly suspension or something, stuff like that, I don't know, or maybe Moog, because those aren't Moog, uh, those are a brand called XRF, but um, yeah, it was good though, really good, I, the install, I hope this video helped you guys, um, the install, you can do it yourself, uh, when I was installing and assembling the uh, CV or the axles, with the U-joints, I specifically did it that way because I didn't want to use a vice, like a vice uh, to put it in, or you know, a pneumatic tool. Although I, in the last video I tried to say I was going to use a pneumatic tool, but uh, this guy ended up showing me a trick on how to get them out in like not even five minutes, and it worked good. And that's what I showed you guys. Uh, granted, I did spray them overnight, and they sat overnight with the PB blaster. But uh, yeah, man, just I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I hope the content I put out there helps you guys. Uh, once again. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you're new, if you're new, just like in the last video, if you're new to the channel and you subscribe, welcome. If you still haven't subscribed but you're new to the videos and stuff, I still welcome you. Uh, no haters around here. Uh, thank you for all the likes on the videos, the comments, the DMs, the messages, everything. Thank you so much for that. Um, trying to think of it was something else I had to mention. Oh yes, I forgot to mention this last video. Uh, my buddy Jeremy. He hit me up the other day and told me that he uh, got some customers from uh, my videos, my video, that I, either the video or the Instagram post, I'm not sure, but he got some customers from uh, one of those and they used the promo code I gave them or I have out there on my YouTube and on my Instagram, uh, promo code everything and you'll get 5% off. So, uh, and so far he said the customers were happy. Um, so yeah, once again, if you're trying to get injectors done, uh, if you're trying to get injectors, I know there's a lot of competition and events coming up real soon. Uh, hit, hit them up, all right? Uh, don't fork out the extra dollar, you know, because that's all you're left with. It's not, all right? If your injectors in your truck are fine, even if you're kind of hesitant because they got 150, 200,000 miles on them, do it, okay? Because what's going to happen is he's going to take the injectors in, he's going to look at it, he's going to test them, everything, and he's going to know what needs to get changed. And based off the mileage you tell him, he's going to know what needs to be changed, what suspect to go out soon and such and such. So he is the man, he is the, the Dalai Lama when it comes to building injectors. So if you want to get, if you want good quality injectors built, none of that Italy crap, none of that Chinese crap, if you want good Bosch, German quality injector parts, hit my man up, Jeremy uh, Wagner. His name and phone number and website, hbinjection.com, will be in the description below. Also, like I said earlier, if you want a discount, uh, use my promo code, everything, uh, in the checkout, either online or if you call him, they mention uh, mention Cameron sent you from YouTube, Instagram, whatever. He knows me. Uh, he knows what you're talking about. He's going to take care of you, okay? So, once again, you guys have a good night. Uh, unboxing coming soon for a new part. So, be on, be on the lookout for that. It does involve boost. So, I'm just going to leave it like that. But new part coming in. So, if you guys enjoyed it, uh, please... If you enjoyed this video, <laughs> it's late, I'm sorry. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, give me a like, thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, you guys be safe. Peace out. God bless.